So you know, being a Minnesota Vikings fan, that playoff pain comes with the territory. The four Super Bowl losses hurt, if you're old enough to remember them. But if not, they're still a major part of the legacy. The Hail Mary, going back to the 70s, and Staubach to Pearson. Need I bring up the 1998 season, going 15-1 in the NFC Championship game. Gary Anderson hasn't missed a kick all year. And Bob's your uncle, what do you know? They find a way to lose in the Metrodome in overtime to the Falcons. That 2009 season, all Brett Favre has to do is take a knee, keep running, and maybe get the first down. Or he could do what Favre does and uh, throw across his body over the middle of the field, and we all know how that played out. So, for Vikings fans, maybe you thought this past season it was going to be different. You get that divisional round game. You've got the Saints coming in, and you jump on top of them early, but then here come the Saints charging back, and it looks like it is all she wrote. Last play of the game, Case Keenum drops back, throws to the right to Stephon Diggs, Marcus Williams miffs, whiffs, excuse me. And Stephon Diggs now realizes he's got a clear path to the end zone. And they win. And at that point, I was wondering and thought, man, maybe the Vikings' playoff fortunes have changed a little bit. Maybe they've finally gotten one. And after winning in that type of fashion, it would seem like the path to the Super Bowl was clear especially going up against a Philadelphia Eagles team. Yes, you'd be in Philly, but they were, they were going against their backup quarterback and Nick Foles. Minnesota had all the things attached with the emotions of you win this game and you get to play the Super Bowl at home. You talk about the ultimate home field advantage, playing the Super Bowl in your stadium. You don't have to travel. You don't have to do anything. You could sleep at home. You could do all of that. And then, unfortunately, the NFC Championship game happened, and they got stoned, basically. They got, they got whooped early and repeatedly. Maybe they focused a little bit too much on that. So it ended up going from one week being this, heartbreak, this uh, playoff triumph to playoff heartbreak. Skull Vikings. <laughs> Y'all choked away a chance to host the Super Bowl. Yes, I take great pride in it. That's exciting. It's awesome. But for the Minnesota Vikings, you got a team that seems to have a window of opportunity right now where if one or two breaks go a different way, this is a Super Bowl team, and that's the way it feels. So it's not surprising to see that they went big in free agency after Kirk Cousins and ultimately got him. Gave him an entirely guaranteed deal, said we feel Kirk Cousins is that guy in the quarterback position for us based off of the strength of this team overall. And I will say this, Kirk Cousins is definitely better than Case Keenum. Is Kirk Cousins that guy that you can win a championship with? Eh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, most certainly didn't do it with the Redskins, but the Vikings are a much better team on both sides of the ball, specifically defense, than the Redskins have ever been um, during his time there. So that was the big move this offseason for the Vikings. After that heartbreaking NFC Championship game loss, it was... Go get Kirk Cousins, and to their credit, they found their guy, and they went and got him. Now, when you point to the NFL draft for the Vikings, I don't know how hugely important this was, frankly. Because they've got a really good core. They've got star players on both sides of the ball. At this point, you're probably just looking for a couple of guys that can fill some gaps, provide some depth, maybe in the future be starters. But if you come out of this draft with not a lot, it's not going to kill you immediately. It might be felt more two, three, four years down the road. Um, so in the first round, they went with a guy in Mike Hughes from Central Florida, part of the national championship Central Florida team this past season. Uh, you're talking about a guy who has massive upside, there is no question, and projects to be a high-end slot corner in the league, but he's raw and he's going to take some time. But he does also provide you some abilities in the return game. It was interesting to me that this is a team that already had Xavier Rhodes and Trey Waynes that they both spent first-round picks on. Mackenzie Alexander, former second-round pick. And now you're investing another first-round pick into the secondary. It's funny because in the past you've heard Mike Zimmer talk about and you've heard stories about 
his system and talking about the corners or a dime a dozen, yet he's drafted three of them in the first round over the past six years. Seems to be pretty important to me. Well, when you look at where the Vikings were picking at number 30, yes, to me, in theory, there were better players available, but it's not like Mike Hughes was a bad pick, and I totally get it, and I understand it. It might take a little bit to get it out of him, but I think long-term he ends up a better NFL player than Mackenzie Alexander. So worst-case scenario, you've upgraded in the slot. Um, I really like the second-round pick of Brian O'Neill from Pittsburgh. Look, the Vikings did a lot to remake their offensive line last year, but I still don't feel like it's all the way there. Um, this was an athletic gamble, similar to Mike Hughes, an athletic gamble. Well, Brian O'Neill is another athletic gamble at a premium position, in this case, left tackle. His technique is terrible, but his athleticism is phenomenal. And I always go back to thinking about Jason Peters, if you recall correctly, was undrafted coming out of college, and he was primarily a tight end. He was eventually converted into being an offensive tackle, became one of the best in the league. I'm not saying Brian O'Neill is going to be that, but when you're talking about at the end of round two and positions to gamble on and talents to gamble on, Brian O'Neill was a pretty, pretty good choice. Uh, Jalen Holmes, who they took in round four, could provide some depth as a base end, as an interior pass rusher. Um, I like Conklin a little bit for them as a backup tight end behind Kyle Rudolph. He's got some upside worth the fifth round pick. Uh, the kid they got out of Auburn, the kicker Carlson, you know, he's got a strong leg. Accuracy at times can be a little questionable, but he's got the leg. Um, so he may be their kicker long term. Colby Gossett, I feel like is one of those guys that could fly under the radar and someday potentially be a starter inside. Aruna is another guy for depth on the edge. He may not make the team right away, but there's some athletic upside there. Um, I like what the Vikings did in the sense of they were gambling on athletes in several different places, especially with their early picks, especially with Hughes and O'Neal. I felt like for where they were sitting and what they targeted, that they did all right. No question, though. The only thing that really matters coming out of this offseason is how does Kirk Cousins play. That will determine ultimately how far the Vikings go. So you just have to hope if you're a Vikings fan that they get a couple of these dudes out of this draft class to pan out. Because if they do, then that bodes well for you being able to have some type of sustained window of success.